Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to all of you. And do you know what time it is? Yes, it is coffee time with me, Father Sam. And I am sitting here enjoying a cup of coffee in my office. And if I look out my window here, I uh, see it's, of course, still raining. So praise God for that. I know we've had a lot of rain, but, you know, that's very important. We need that water. Uh, but I'm also looking uh, at our stage that is uh, set up um, right in the plaza as you enter uh, the plaza of the church there. And that stage, I know you can't see it very clearly. Uh, here, I'll give you a little close-up of it. But it is um, showing a scene from uh, one of our rooms uh, that we had set up for the experience of the Eucharist devotion back in October, uh, that wonderful, uh, successful event uh, that we did for the uh, Eucharistic revival. And uh, the room is uh, the Passover room. And of course, Passover is the, the meal that uh, God had uh, ordered the Israelites to prepare uh, on the eve of them fleeing the um, the enslavement from Egypt, that it was through the Passover meal that they were freed because it was by the lamb that was slain. So there was a lamb that was chosen without defect. So the lamb can't have any blemish as they, as they would refer to it in scripture and must be male, so a male lamb. Uh, that uh, would be slaughtered at the twilight and its blood would be placed on the doorposts of the Hebrew homes. And so when the angel of death came uh, and saw the blood, the angel would pass over that house. As you recall, the angel of death was sent as the last of the 10 plagues that God inflicted upon uh, Pharaoh and the people of Egypt um, to um, force them to release um, God's people, the, Is the Israelites. Um, uh, and so uh, that, of course, should sound very familiar, that whole scene of Passover and the Passover meal, eating the lamb, right, that the lamb had to be eaten, uh, it's, it's roasted flesh, uh, and the blood had to be used um, as a way to show that these people were part of the covenant, that the Israelites were part of the covenant with God to be saved. Uh, and the reason it sounds familiar is because it is the prefigurement of uh, what we celebrate in the gift of the Holy Eucharist, right? It was God, Jesus, the Lamb of God who was slain in the twilight, uh, and his blood is what saves us from death, right? That, that blood is when we receive communion is smeared in us in some way on our, the doorposts of our souls, if you will. And so we are saved from death and we eat the lamb's flesh, right? In Holy Communion, we truly eat our Lord's flesh uh, as a sign of being in the covenant with God. And so that's um, a really great, that's what we call one of the stations of the Eucharist. That's why it's an Old Testament station of the Eucharist is the Passover. And so I'm grateful for the Passover team for getting that set up for us. Now, another thing I wanted to speak about, since we're speaking about the Lamb of God, is uh, the new changes uh, that we have. Well, actually, they're old, going back to reverting to an old posture in Mass that we had probably 20, over 20 years ago, prior to Bishop uh, Stephen Blair. Uh, we would kneel right after the priest at Mass and the communion rite would declare um, uh, well, we would do the, the Agnus Dei or the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, right? We say that three times and then there's the three responses. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us, grant us peace. And so after that grant us peace, um, we would kneel when the priest would then do a, a final elevation of the host um, and of the chalice and say, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I'm trying to get the cross in there if I can. There we go. Um, you know, always good to see the crucifix. So um, those, uh, so we will be, instead of standing, that's what Bishop Blair asked us to do. Um, and he had his reasons for that, but I don't have to go into all the details of it. Uh, but we are, uh, Bishop Cotta has decided <clears throat> to go back to the kneeling at that point because that will be in conformity with most, if uh, I think 
probably all the dioceses practically in the United States do that. So that's a custom in the United States is to kneel after the Agnus Dei uh, as um, that declaration of behold the Lamb of God is made by the priest prior to dis distribution of Holy Communion. So it's pretty simple um, and but profound. It's a profound change in, in the way that we uh, recognize that this is God, Jesus, this is our Lord, and that we want to kneel. And we're not kneeling because we are uh, groveling before him, even though we probably should, right? We have to be begging always for his mercy, but showing just our love and adoration for our Lord. That is what, in this, in this part of the Mass, when we're kneeling, is just adoring him and just so grateful that, that that kneeling really, you know, when you're grateful, you just you feel like just you just kind of go to your knees, right? You, it's just an incredible, just like the, the those who encountered him when he was uh, an infant, right in the manger when they came. We can hear of the uh, the postures of adoration that the wise men and the and the shepherds did, um, and so we too uh, encounter Christ, and in that encounter we will um, kneel uh, prior to receiving him. So. So that is the new posture beginning on uh, February 14th uh, at uh, the Masses on Ash Wednesday. And you'll be reminded of it. I, we've already gotten the bulletin. We had a, a social media post. We'll probably do another social media post. I'll probably talk about it this weekend at the Masses. So again, it is a pretty simple thing. So after the Agnus Dei, by the way, that means Lamb of God in Latin. Uh, and... Uh, and the priest will probably say, please kneel at this point, uh, just to be a reminder. And then we'll do, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold, uh, have blessed are those called to the, the supper of the Lamb. So that was the, 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 the Passover was the prefigurement of this supper that we are now going to participate and really eat his flesh and drink his blood, having that blood in us so death can pass over us and sin can pass over us and that all that holds us back from really experiencing the full life that God has won for us, that Jesus has won for us in his uh, death and resurrection, that whatever is holding us back, that we can be freed from that, that, that enslavement, right? And that's ultimately what the Passover meal did for um, our Hebrew brothers and sisters that they are the, the, the descendants, our descendants, um, well, our ancestors, excuse me, descendants are ahead of us, not behind yeah. us. So our ancestors, our Hebrew ancestors, uh, by instructed through, uh, by God through Moses, um, what, 1,300 years before Christ, before he instituted uh, the, uh, the supper, the last supper, or uh, the, the Lord's supper. So the, the of course, Passover, uh, there's so many more, um, symbols and meanings in, in the whole rite and the meal uh, that really correlates so um, uh, in very tightly to what we celebrate in the Eucharistic uh, meal. But um, I don't have all the time to go into that right now, but just wanted to again remind you of the posture changes that are coming uh, Ash Wednesday. It's February 14th uh, this year and um, it will be pretty simple, and we're just kneeling at the lamb, uh, right after the Lamb of God uh, to show our adoration and preparation to receive our Lord's body and blood. And then after we receive, you are then invited also to uh, the, the customary uh, position or posture in the United States after communion, which is to kneel again, to kneel in that gratitude and, and again, adoration and admiration of our Lord, or you can sit, um, but kneeling, I would encourage, because that, again, profoundly maybe shows what we're doing and giving thanks and having Jesus in us, and we're holding him, and he's holding us in that moment that is just a beautiful intimacy with God, and that we really want to take that time. And then there, after we do the communion song and everybody has received, there's this period of silence in the Mass, and we really need to honor that silence. And the priests, we really need to just take our time there, just to miss a couple of moments, just to really recall what we've done and what is who's in us and, and that we are really being um, fed by God, that he is fulfilling our deepest hungers there, right? That hunger for him, that hunger for life, that hunger for um, the joy and peace that, that he has made us for, that that's where we really get 
uh, to to um, to feel that, right? And and ask for that grace to feel it, and and not to be distracted. Like, okay, when are we going to hear that closing prayer so I can get out of the parking lot and get to Denny's or wherever I go for breakfast or get my donut or you know, or, or what's I wonder what the score of the game is. Like all of that, you have to push that out of your mind and just take that moment and be in that intimacy, be attentive to Jesus after receiving Him, and this is so important. Uh, anyway, you'll have uh, a chance to see our um, see that display of the of uh, the Passover. Uh, just a little glimpse of what uh, again was set up for our experience of the Eucharist devotion. Um, that was a beautiful. All of the rooms were, were incredibly uh, uh, built and and maintained in that and and designed. And so I was so grateful again to all our stewards who participated in that and all those who came to our experience of the Eucharist devotion, over 3,700 people. And finally, um, we do have the second part of the BMA, the Bishop's Ministry Appeal that I'll be doing this weekend uh, to get that uh, taken care of for 2024. Just a uh, Quick reminder, um, we'll have the, maybe the, the link on here so you guys can go and just uh, take care of that BMA. It's important that we support our bishop because of all the ministries that he provides to us in our parish and particularly thinking about the ministry of um, or the importance of the formation of our future priests. That the money that you you give to the BMA helps support uh, Father Cesar Martinez, who is the director of vocations and all the work that he does. Uh, to uh, recruit and to uh, support uh, young men who are considering the uh, the call to the priesthood and to may help them through the whole process uh, of the evaluations and uh, to see if they are you know competent and and capable of of carrying out the the work of the priest and, and to be apt instruments of mercy and then doing the whole application process of the seminary and then uh, getting them through that seminary formation uh, to be good and holy priests that we pray. And we have, uh, I think, over six uh, young men that are presently um, discerning and uh, in formation for the Diocese of Stockton. So pray for them, but that BMA uh, does support uh, the, the future priests, our future deacons, um, all of our lay ministers, any of the, the, the ministries that the, the bishop provides for or the diocese provides for a training and our liturgical ministers, uh, the Department of Worship there in our Department of Liturgy. The church is called Liturgy or Worship. I think it's called Worship at the diocese. So so all of uh, those services or those those ministries at the, at the diocese does support and help us here at the parish. So with any money that you give to the BMA helps us in those ways, but then anything over and above our goal will come back to us. We just last year received back, we haven't received it yet, but we went over by $45,000 by your generous support. So thank you so much. And that money is coming back to the parish and we're going to be able to use it for evangelization, to get more people uh, to come to mass, uh, to really get to our uh, the, the the work of the gospel uh, in our area in our parish bounds um, uh, active you know continue to grow in that uh, we're planning on doing some uh, more ministry for youth and young adults and teens with that money so any money that we you give over and above our our goal will uh, definitely uh, support um, that evangelization and mission of the parish which of course you know the mission right you know it but you better as I say it pretty often, uh, and it is uh, to evangelize God's people, beginning with the gift of the Holy Eucharist, right? So that's what we do, and that's what we can, you can help uh, when giving to the BMA, both directly, uh, well, to the bishop, and, and then any money that, that we raise over and above our goal comes back. So I think that makes it clear. And again, it's coffee time with me, Father Sam. Um, and you look at their crucifix there. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And uh, we'll start those postures, those new postures, on February 14th at the Ash Wednesday Masses. Uh, you can find the ash, the uh, the whole schedule uh, uh, online. Um, and uh, have a most blessed day. And don't forget, please, to share and like, like and share uh, these videos. And so have a most blessed day.